Okay, here I'm going to go through the process of properly germinating a cannabis seed. So hopefully you can take a seed and turn it into a nice, healthy-looking seedling like the one pictured here. So what is germination? Let's first define that. It's the development of a plant from a dormant seed. This is not the same as emergence, which is when the sprout actually breaks the soil. So seeds can germinate but not emerge. And this is important note here. These are germinating seeds is that when you're looking at the germination percentage that's usually provided by companies it's only the percentage that actually produced in this case a small root it does not mean that this they, they emerged from the soil so germination rate will always be higher than emergence rate so how deep to plant this is important so that you have the increased odds of emergence is you don't want to plant your seeds too deep because the seeds will run out of energy reserves before it can emerge and start utilizing um, light energy to, for the photosynthetic process. Typically, you want to plant seeds um, only about an eighth to a quarter inch, three mils to six mils deep. Rule of thumb is to plant the seed twice as deep as the width. So an eighth inch seed should be planted about a quarter inches uh, deep here. So in this image here, again, it's just showing planting and soil. But this would be much too deep for cannabis seeds because they'll run out of energy before they can emerge out of the soil. So what does the germination process require? Well, it requires a seed that has quality genetics. Uh, and it should be a quality seed. On top of the genetics, um, we need seeds that have this kind of dark coloration and are full. These typically come from a known source. It's helpful uh, for increase the odds of quality. Now, what defines a quality seed? Well, we can see very consistent conditions here, but uh, the presence of stored nutrients. So even these uh, full seeds here have a limited amount of energy stored in their endosperm, and that's what gives the seeds the energy to emerge out of the soil before they shed that seed coat and are able to capture um, light energy. If planted at the proper depth, energy re reserves will allow the emergence out of the soil. And again, quality seed, nice consistent conditions we see here. Now, seeds only need water, heat, and air to germinate, which sounds really easy, but having the right amount and ratio of those is important. For water, soaking seeds can speed up water infiltration, but this is not required. When water does enter the seeds, it will cause hormones, for example, tuberellins, to activate and produce this radical. When the radical pops, this is the first sign that germination has started. For temperature, more temperature is not better. The goal is to maintain about 78 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit to increase the odds of successful germination. If temperatures reach 90 degrees and greater, this can kill the seeds and prevent germination from occurring. This will essentially roast the seeds and denature vital proteins, preventing this radical formation of the um, seeds. Air. Seeds do need to breathe. Uh, they especially need oxygen. So over-soaking them will really suffocate them. See the example, example of the scuba diver here. Uh, seeds need to breathe. They need to have that kind of air exchange that's occurring. If you just soak them in water and kind of drown them, they're not going to be able to exchange important oxygen for the process of respiration. Uh, advice, if you are going to seed soak, providing time uh, for seeds to soak in water can help increase germination rates. Purified distilled RO, which is reverse osmosis, or quality tap water can all be used. There's no one pr preferred source. Some growers may even put some seaweed or kelp to help the process along, but again, this is not necessary. Soaking seeds no more than 12 to 18 hours is recommended. If you you soak in the bath for too long, your fingers will get pruny. We don't want to drown the seeds and oversaturate the water inside them. You may notice if you do soak your seeds, some may sink over time, which indicates a fully developed seed. They're denser, they're heavier. Those that float typically are hollow and have poor endosperm development. And the result is typically reduced germination rates. Scarification is weakening the seed coat, which increases water infiltration to improve germination rates. By carefully sanding the outer surface of the seed coat can allow for easier water per penetration. You're essentially taking away that solid texture and just a little sandpaper allowing water to get inside the seed a little bit more efficiently. However, if you do over sand them, you can damage the delicate embryo inside. And not sanding could cause a delay in water infiltration, which could reduce or increase uh, germination time. With scar scarified seeds, a soaking time can often be reduced or may not even be needed in some cases. You can direct seed, and this is a preferred method. Uh, moisture initiates the germination process, so if you're planting them, you're saturating the media ahead of time. That should provide adequate moisture levels to initiate the germination process. Oversaturating the media will suffocate the seeds. There's no need for additional hormones or even kelp to aid in this process. Distilled water is advised for consistency and lack of additives. The key part here is having everything prepared ahead of time. And you can see even the corner, the middle, and the side cells here are all even moisture throughout. 
that's important to allow even uh, germination process and not having wet, overly wet or dry spots. Some growers have heard this paper towel method. This is a discouraged method for cannabis seeds. It's a process that involves starting seeds in moistened paper towel prior to adding to media. This allows you to see the radical produced and transplant seeds that you know have germinated. So growers think it's the advantage, and while that is true, this process is discouraged because increase of odds of, of damage to that very newly formed radical. This method is best suited for plants that, that have large seeds, produce large roots. Uh, cannabis does not fall into that category. Uh, environmental factors. Some believe that you can increase the percentage of female plants by adjusting nutrients and light. None of these have supporting science since gender is determined by genes. Some say increasing nitrogen and humidity, lower K levels during the first two weeks will make plants turn female. Not the case. Ensuring plants receive more blue than red light for about 14 to 16 hours. Not going to influence a male or female plant. And reduce plant stress to increase the chance of producing female plants. Again, a uh, false statement there and not going to influence whether that seedling is going to be male or female. Radical production. So in about three to eight days, the seeds will produce a radical indicating the germination process has been initiated. However, much as you may want to see this happen, the best place is for this to happen directly in the media. You want to be transferring these seeds because see um, how small some of these radicals are. The damage, the odds of damage are great. During that transfer process, may lead to damaging. If you break this radical, it may stunt or even kill your new prospective plants. Remember, roots do not like sunlight or be di disturbed. This is why it's best you just put them in the media and let them be. That media that you're using is hopefully a propagation or germination mix. This is a finer mix. Uh, it's a finer kind of substrate here and allows for better soil moisture contact with the small seeds. Less air pockets will develop, causing more consistent conditions for your seedlings. A growing media is coarser and may result in potentially dry pockets and reduce your germination rate. So for the germination pro process, use a germination or a propagation mix. Rock oil can also be used for germination. Uh, there's tubes that can be used. It's essentially inert material. It can allow for seedlings to be directly planted into larger containers with minimal root disturbance. There are some companies that make a small area you can put your seed in, and then larger blocks that easily can accept the smaller blocks there. Regardless of your chosen media, it's important to pre-soak the material and have it ready before you soak your seeds. Get everything ready and then start the seeds. Don't do it the other way around in case you're missing something. Once you start those seeds in water, the germination process ideally will be initiated.